Let's start this video with uh, by finding the, the rank of a matrix A. Let's go with um, one, two, three, four. That's always a nice standby. Now we know now how to find the rank of a matrix like this. We want to reduce it. This is a nice easy one. I'll take the first row, multiply it by negative three and add it to the second row. So negative three times this is zero. That's what we'll go there. And negative three times this is negative six. Negative six plus four gives me negative two. So I've established my first pivot and I want, uh, I have a one here and zeros below it. Um, so I'm gonna move from this um, position, I'm gonna move over one and down one and I want this now to be a pivot. So the next thing I'm gonna do is scale the second row by negative one half. So the first row stays the same. The second row is negative one half times negative two, which is one. I hope you can see where this is going. The second row is now what I want. I'm gonna take the second row, multiply it by negative two, and add it to the first row, and I get that. And when I look at this now, I can see that there are two pivots. And so therefore, the rank of this matrix is two. But now let's take a look at another way that you can get this information. Um, it's overkill in an example like this, but there will be times when it's um, really handy uh, to be able to find the rank a different way. Here is how we approach this this other way. I'm gonna take the determinant of A. This is a two by two matrix, so that's pretty straightforward to do, right? It's just four minus six, and that's negative two. Now, this two, it's a negative two, so it's, it's different anyway, right? But this two right here and this two right here are completely unrelated. The relevance of this negative two here is that it's not zero. What's important is that it's not zero. What we've found is that the determinant of this two by two matrix is not zero, and therefore, the rank of this matrix is the same as its dimension. Right? This is a two by two matrix. It has, uh, we're in, in R2 as it were. So that is why the rank is two, right? There are two columns, two, ve uh, two vectors here, and they are linearly independent. And so the dimension of this, um, this matrix is where the rank comes from. If I take a different matrix, say for example, matrix B, and I use one, two, two, four. I can row reduce that. Now I'm finding the rank the, the, the way we did previously, right? I'll take the first row and leave it as it is. Take the second row and uh, take negative two times the first row and add it to the second row. Negative two times one plus two is zero. Negative two times two is negative four, plus four is zero. And you can see now that because I have a zero row here, these rows, the rows in the original matrix, are linearly dependent. Now it'd be easy to look at this uh, reduced matrix and say there's one pivot and therefore the matrix, the, the rank must be one, but we're not quite ready to go there yet. I can also say that the determinant of B, which is four minus four, which is zero. The fact that this is zero tells me something about tells me something about the, the, the dependence of the the rows in the matrix, but it also tells me something about its rank. It does not tell me that the rank is zero, nor that the rank is one because there's one it doesn't tell me any of that what it tells me is that I have to keep going um, because this has turned out to be zero this determinant hasn't given me enough information in and of itself up here um, I found the rank by using a minor right there is only one minor here finding a minor and that's that is essentially what this determinant is right I found the, the value of the minor here um, and that's a non-zero number down here, finding the value of the minors gave me, the, the, this minor gave me zero, um, but that means I need to go back in. Uh, I was finding the minor of a two by two matrix. I need to go down a dimension. 
I need to go down to dimension one and take the determinant of each of the entries. The determinant, let's call the, this B11, B12, B21, and B22. The dimension, sorry, the determinant of B11, the determinant of B12, and so on. And what what that is, is just the number in that position. So the determinant of B11 is 1, B12's determinant is 2, we get 2 and 4. So that's what the determinants are there, and they are all non-zero. Now we can ask ourselves, what dimension were we working in here when we found these non-zero entries? Turns out that one of these, in fact, three of these could be zero. As long as there's one here that's uh, non-zero, then since we're working in the dimension of one space, effectively, we can say that the rank of B is one. But that is not because we found one pivot here. Um, because the determinant was zero, we had to go back and go down a dimension. Now I can do this with a three by three matrix. Uh, let's try to keep the numbers small. Um, but I'm still going to be using this, the idea here of um, the determinant of a two by two, or the minors. Remember that the minors here are the determinant of this four by four matrix, 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 and this four by four matrix. There are all kinds of possible entries here made up of four numbers. In fact, I hope you'll remember from a previous lesson that I can find the minor associated with any entry. So the minor associated with A11, I'll use a highlighter here, is the determinant of this submatrix. So the minor 11, I would say, is the determinant of the matrix 1, negative 2, 1, 0, which is 0 minus negative 2, which is 2. And I need to do that essentially for for every entry here. There will be nine of them. Two one, M two two, M two three, three one, three two, and three three. And the minor M one two is going to be just trying to select a, a color here. The minor associated with the entry 1, 2, which is, cross out the row, cross out the column that, that that's in, and you're going to take the, the determinant of that matrix. So that's going to be 0 minus 0, which is 0. And I'll just do the other ones off camera. All right, I've been busy computing minors. Let me pick one and show you what I did. Um, for, let's see, which one should we do? Let's do A23, that's this entry right here. Just by way of reminder, I'm gonna cross out the row and column in which that's associated. I'm not interested in the cofactor there. I'm not interested in the negative two. I'm interested in the values that are not in either its row or its column. And then uh, what those entries are, are these two and these two. And I'm going to take 1 times 1 and subtract 2 times 0. So the value I found for this, the minor 8, 2, 3, is 1 minus 0, which is 1. And that's what I've got here. 1 minus 0 is 1. So I have found all of these, cof or sorry, all of these minor values. And the good news is I've done this because I want to show you uh, what the process looks like and how many you might potentially have to compute. But the good news is that since I have found one that is not zero, I can say that the rank, let me use a different pen, different color rather, the rank of this matrix is the dimension of this is a three by three matrix. So whether I consider 
the, the number of rows and the number of columns, they're both three, so the, the rank is three. If I were to do, uh, let me just do that. I'll do it off screen. I'm gonna take this matrix, I'm gonna row reduce it. I'll be right back. Yep, sure enough, this row reduces, this is row equivalent to, that's meant to be one of those little squiggly things that says is row equivalent to, one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So that's easy to do on the calculator, and in some cases that's going to be um, an easier process than doing all of this, um, finding uh, finding all these minors, but sometimes it's not. So uh, because I have found three pivots here, that confirms that the rank of this matrix is three. Now, that's great for square matrices, but what if you have a matrix that's not a square matrix? Can you use this to find the rank of a non-square matrix? And the answer is yes, you can. So for example, here is a three by four matrix, three by four, and we want to find its rank. We were doing that on the previous screen by finding determinants, but you can only take determinants of square matrices. So what we're gonna do is take determinants of some square sub matrices. I'll hi highlight one as an example. Here is a three by three matrix. So if I take the determinant of that matrix, that would suffice. And here's another one. Here's a two by two matrix, right? So there are square matrices kind of embedded in this is larger non-square matrix. And what we're gonna start with is um, take the, the, the values that make up the dimensions of the matrix and pick the smallest one. I'm clearly not gonna be able to find a four dimensional minor here, but I can find a three dimensional minor. So I'm gonna start by making a, a copy of this matrix, I'll call it D sub one, uh, that only contains a three by three sub matrix. And that would be one, negative two, zero, two, one, five, zero, one, three. And that's not the only one. Here's another one. Could be D sub two, could be one zero one two five three zero three five and there are several of these uh, i could have one negative two one two one negative three i have to be careful zero one five that as long as i'm taking an entry from column one column three and column four I have to take the entries from columns one, three, and four in the other two, as other two um, sub matrices as well. And there is a fourth one. I think this is the last one. That is negative two, zero, one, one, five, negative three, and one, three, five. These are all the three by three sub matrices of the matrix D. Now what I need to do is find the determinants of these four, but not necessarily all four of them. I just need to go until I find one that's non-zero. So let's start with this one. The determinant of matrix D sub one is equal to, I don't have a whole lot of E's here. I, I do notice I have one zero entry. So if I use either this row or this column, then my work will be minimized a little bit. I think I'll go on this row right here. So I'm gonna um, expand on this row right here. And that means that I have, let's see if I start with the one, be crossing out this row and this column, and I'll have one, which is the value of the, the entry I just crossed out twice here, times the determinant of this submatrix, which is one times three minus five, which is negative two. And all this work that I set up here is completely unnecessary now because I found a single non-zero determinant, a single non-zero minor of this uh, matrix. Um, I wrote these out because I wanted you to see what it was I was looking for when I, uh, when I started with a non-square matrix. I wrote this, the square, um, Submatrices, all the possible square submatrices. The reason I did that is because if this had turned out to be zero, I would need to have gone to the next one. And I wanted you to see that there's not just three. There's not just what you get when you cross out 
this column and are left with the other three columns. And it's not just what you get when you cross out that column. That would be two options. But if you cross out each column individually and copy down the other three, um, then that's where you get those, these four options here. So if this had turned out to be zero, I would have to have worked out what the next one was. And I wanted you to see what all the, all the options were gonna be. Also, I could have done my first minor on any of these four. I just picked the first one since it was the first one in my list. Because that turned out to be non-zero, um, I now know that because of the dimension of this guy right here, the dimension of this matrix right here is three by three. So the rank of D is three. And that's the, oops, not D. Rank of D is not D. It is three. I'm having trouble with my tool here. Oh, I wrote them backwards. That's what I did. Look at that. That's supposed to be a D. And that's supposed to be a three. What's going on with my screen? The rank of D is three. There, I finally made it. Okay, the rank of D is three. Um, so the other way you can do this, of course, is by using row reduction. Let's do that just quickly. This matrix, row reduces to one, zero, zero, negative seven, zero, one, zero, negative four, and zero, zero, one, three. This is not an augmented matrix. We started with a three by four matrix. This is this is our original matrix, right? It's not augmented. That's just what it is. When I row reduce it though, I can see that there are one, two, three pivots. So once again, um, we just confirmed what we found a, a minute ago. Rank The rank of this matrix is three because either there are three pivots in the row reduced version of the matrix or we have uh, a non-zero minor, a non-zero determinant of the sub matrix that is uh, that is has a dimension of three, right? So the dimension here is three. I found a non-zero determinant of that sub matrix because that's not zero, not because it's negative two, but because it's not zero, anything but zero. Because it's not zero, uh, and this is a three-dimensional matrix, the rank is three. Or because there are three pivots here, the rank is three. This has been rather a long video uh, to show you something that's really kind of a secondary approach. Um, most of the time, I think because at this stage when you do matrix manipulation, you'll be doing it on your calculator. The previous, the, the previous uh, technique, if you will, is probably the easier way to go. So most of the time, my suggestion would be to stick it in your calculator, do RREF on it, that stands for reduced row echelon form, your textbook doesn't use the word row in that, but the elementary row operations are implied in that. Uh, we just call it reduced echelon form. So RREF, reduced row echelon form, takes any matrix that you have in your calculator and reduces it to whatever it's gonna reduce it to, right? It reduces it as much as it can. And when you do that, look, look to see how many pivots you have. That's really all you need to do to find the rank of a matrix. Um, this sort of secondary approach that I've been showing you, this, this, this other technique, is historically important in that for some really large matrices before the advent of cal calculators, um, you know, if you're going to have to do all this by hand and you needed to know what the, the, the rank of the matrix was, it might be really handy to start with uh, a quick few calculations to see if you could just find a non-determinant, non-zero determinant of a submatrix. Anyway, so that's what this lecture has been all about. It's rather a long one for this purpose, but um, that's what it is. So there you go.